All right. Let's start with our normal Tai Chi. Go back and forth. Lift your heels, move your body. Let everything start to open up. Sometimes when it is kind of damp outside, it takes us a little longer to warm up, to get the blood moving. Get those aches out, especially in the morning. Eventually, we're going to come to a stop here. So we're going to start to move the rest of the body. So let's start with our skiers. You're going to bring your feet hip width distance apart, right? Take your hands up to the sky. The skiers, right? We're just going to bend the knees. You're going to send your hips back and down, and you're going to sweep your hands back behind you. Your palms are going up towards the sky, right? And then push them forward, like push it through the mud. Come all the way back up. All right, let's do that nine more times. Nine. Eight, seven, five, four, three, two, one. Bring your hands down to your sides. Take your feet out wide. Take your hands up to the sky. Again, what we're going to do here, we're going to take your left hand, bring it to your right ankle. Right, take that right hand straight up to the sky, and then come back up, go the other way. Left hand to the right ankle. Just going up and down here. doing here. We're going to keep the legs straight, the arms straight, the back straight. Let everything start to open up. Let that core to kick in to move the body. And keep everything else straight. Let's do three more on each side here. One more. One. One. All right, now come all the way up here. Let your hands come back down. You're going to bring your legs together here. Right? And then what we're going to do, right, a little different before we sit all the way down. Right? Take your hands, bring them up to the sky. If you can keep them up overhead, you can pull them to heart center. Right, this little balance challenge is going to start to make our core work. Come up off your heels. So you're just on the balls of your feet. All right? And then from there, you're going to start to come down. Come down as low as you can. Maybe you can get all the way where you drop your hips to your heels. Maybe you're just coming halfway, right? Like you're in a chair. But your heels are lifted either way, right? Go as low as you can. Now, whether you're halfway down, a quarter of the way down, or all the way down, we're going to twist. First to the right, you're just going to bring your left elbow toward your right knee. Hold there for a breath. All right, now bring it back to center. And then go the other way. See if you can bring that right elbow to the left knee. Hold there for a breath or two. Come back to center here. And then as you come back to center, wherever you are, push through the balls of your feet. Bring yourself all the way back up to standing. Keep your arms overhead. And then from here, we're going to do that one more time, right? So you're going to lift your heels. And again, your hands can straight up, stay straight up, or you can bring them together and pull them to heart center. We're going to go back down, right? To your place, even though I just lost my balance, right? to your spot. Maybe you get all the way down. And maybe it's a quarter of the way down, halfway down, right? Wherever you are. And this time, what we're going to do, you're going to interlace your hands together. Push them out in front of you so your palms are coming 
towards the top of your mat. And then take your hands up overhead. See if you can reach them up overhead. And then lean your hands over to the right. You're still trying to balance on the balls of your feet. Come back to center. Now go the other way. Push your palms over to the left. Come back to center. And this time as we get back to center, you're just going to drop your hands down to the mat. Let yourself come all the way down to your glutes. Oh, not going back up. Now we're all the way down. All right, now down here in this hook line, right? We're going to come right in to boat. You're going to lift your feet up off the mat. Reach your arms out forward. All right, I'm going to turn sideways here. So you guys can see as we do this next part, but we're right here now, right? Usually I tell you you can grab around your knees or behind your thighs. We're going to move our arms here in a second. If it's really hard for you to hold boat, just point your toes and just tap your toes lightly on the mat and be here, all right? You can lift your feet off the mat, then lift your feet off the mat. And we're going to bring our hands together. You're going to interlace your hands. I'll set that pointer finger, right? You're making that little pointer finger mudra. And then we're going to twist here. So you're going to twist your torso over to the right. So your legs stay still. Move your arms outside your right leg, get your chest to face the best you can to the right. Go. All right, we're going to bring it back to center here. And then go to the left. Bring it back to center. Now go one more time, two more times actually. We're going to go to the right. Bring it back to center. Take it to the left. Bring it back to center. Take it to the right. Bring it back to center one more time. Take it to the left. Bring it back to center. Now as you come to center here, release your hands. We're going to lower down. You're going to kick your legs long, hovering the heels, right? Shoulders and head hover off the mat. So you're coming down to canoe. Right? Canoe is easier the higher you lift your feet. So lift your feet as high as you need to. So you can hold it. You keep your head and shoulders up off the mat. And just stay here for two more breaths. And then let those heels come down. Let your head and shoulders down. Now you're just flat on the mat. Take your arms overhead. Do a nice big stretch here. From there, now you're going to take your hands to your knees, bring your hands to the crease of your knees, rock yourself up here to a seated position, all right? And then we're going to come around. Now we're going to come into tabletop. That's hands and knees pose. All right. Now we're going to do a little sequence here, right? And then after we're done, Right, we're first just going to do it from tabletop. Then I'm going to show you how to do it from down dog slash plank, right? And then you can decide if you want to stay in tabletop or you want to go to down dog and plank, right? Now, but for this first one, we're all going to do it together from tabletop. All right, so I'm trying to decide if I should do this straight on. Maybe I should turn sideways. But we're going to do the right leg first. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's probably good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to take your right leg. Right? And you're going to kick it back behind you. And then bend into your right knee. You're just going to bring it forward and touch it to your right elbow. All right, and then kick it back behind you. Now you're going to bend into it. So you're bringing the heel towards the glute and then curl that knee under your chest. Take your chin to your chest. Look at your knee. And you're going to kick it back behind you. And from here, you're going to bend into the right knee. You're going to bring it over across your body. Touch it to your left elbow. And then from there, right, when we're here at tabletop, you're just going to take that right knee, slide it over, set it down back behind your right wrist, take your left leg long, and take your left hand up to the sky. So I'm going to end up facing away from you guys, but I'm here in this modified side park. All right, and then we're going to drop everything back down into tabletop. All right, so let's try that on the left side. All right, so you're in tabletop. 
you're kicking that left leg straight back behind you. Bend into the left knee, heel to glute, and then bring it forward, touch the left knee to the left elbow. Kick it straight back behind you, bend into the left knee, curl it under your chest, into your chest, and then kick it back out long. And this time you're gonna bend into that left knee, bring it forward, bring it across your body to touch your right elbow. And then from there, you're gonna take it across the mat so it drops down just behind your left wrist. Take your right leg out long. Take your right hand to the sky. Modify side plank. And then from there, we're gonna drop it all back down into tabletop. All right, so now, that's the sequence from tabletop, right? If you need to go back there, you can go back there. We're gonna try it now, starting in a down dog. So you're gonna tuck your toes under, lift your hips up and back, come in to your first down dog, right? You wanna have your feet and hands about the distance apart so that you can easily, without moving your hands and feet, shift into plank, because we're gonna do that a couple times, right? So if you come and your shoulders away past your wrists, right? Move your feet back a little bit so that your body is nice and wide. If you come and you're having to reach all the way forward, you need to bring your hands and your feet a little bit closer together. All right, shift back into down dog for now, right? Each time I come to plank, we won't stay there that long. You're gonna take your right leg up to the sky here, right? So now we're in a one-legged down dog. And then just like we were in tabletop, you bend into the right knee, you're gonna shift forward. Now you're coming to plank, right? Shoulders over the wrist, touch your right knee to your right elbow. Kick it back up to the sky. And then just like we did before, you bend into that right knee, you curl it under your chest. And then you're gonna kick it back up. Now this time, as you bring that right knee across, you're gonna bring it to your left elbow. Now this time, as you bring that right knee to the left elbow, you're gonna kick that right leg underneath the left armpit. Drop your left heel to the ground. Take your left hand up to the sky. So now we're here in starfish. Right? If you need to make this still a modified plank, you can always still drop that right knee down behind the right wrist and come up if you need to instead of kicking it through, right? But then if you kicked it through, right now you're gonna drop that left hand back down. You're gonna take your right leg, bring it back up to one-legged dog, and then drop it all down into your down dog. Right? So if you need to modify that, if that was too much, you know how to do it on your knees if you need to, you can go there, all right? We're gonna do this left one on from take from down top. Oh, I don't pose right. From down dog. Take your left leg up to the sky. Bend into your left knee. Touch it to your left elbow. Kick it back up to the sky. Bend into your left knee. Curl it under your chest. Kick it back up to the sky. Take that left knee, bring it over to the right elbow. And then from there, you're either coming into starfish, kicking that left leg through, dropping your right heel. Lifting your right hand, we're coming back to that modified side plank. Drop the right hand down, take the left leg back up to the sky, drop it back down into table, into down dog. We're gonna do all of that one more time through, right? You choose, again, you know, right? Do you wanna do it from down dog and plank or do you wanna do it from tabletop? Tabletop, whatever's better for you. We take the right leg up to the sky, bend into it. Tap it to the right elbow. Take it back up to the sky. Curl it under the chest. Take it back up to the sky. Touch it to your left elbow. And then kick it all the way through into your starfish. Drop the left hand. Bring that right leg back up. And then drop it back down into down dog or tabletop if that's where you're at. One more time on the left side. Left leg goes up. Bend into it. Tap it to the left elbow. Take it back up, curl it under your chest, take it back up, tap it to your right elbow, and then kick it through, or into modified side plank, or up into starfish, drop that right hand, take the left leg back up to the sky, drop those left toes down, into your back and down dog, then drop down to your knees, shift all the way back, come into a child's pose.
All right. And when you're ready, come back up into tabletop, right? We're gonna come around. I'm gonna start here on my right hip. So you're gonna lay down on your right hip. You're taking that right forearm to the mat, right? And your knees are stacked on top of each other. Now you're gonna take your left hand, bend into your left elbow, touch your left fingertips behind your neck. So your left elbow's up to the sky. What we're gonna do from here, right? You're gonna lift your feet up, keep your feet glued together, bend into your knees. So you're curling those knees into your chest and then you dip down, touch your left elbow to your left knee. And then you're extending your legs long again, elbow up to the sky. You can drop your feet down each time or you can keep them hovering, right? It's up to you, a little more work. Maybe you lift them up and down, right? And then we're gonna do that nine more times here on this side. So you bend into your knees, tap with your left elbow. Straighten it all out. Bend into your knees, tap with your left elbow. Straighten it all out. Again, try to keep those feet glued together, right? Bend into your knees, tap with your left elbow. Extend it all up. Bend into your knees, tap with your left elbow. Extend it all up. Let's do it five more times. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. And then let those legs come down. Let your left hand come down. Now we're gonna flip it over to the other side. We're gonna do all that on our left hip. Right, so you're gonna lie on your left hip. You're propping yourself up on your left elbow. Pull your feet together. Right hand comes up to the sky. And then you touch those right fingertips to your neck. You're gonna lift your feet up, bend into your knees, and then come forward, tap your right elbow with your right knee. Extend it all along. All right, so we're doing that nine more times here. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Let everything come down. Now, push yourself up here. Swing your legs around in front of you. And then I'm gonna bend into the knees, right? We're gonna lay all the way down on our back. Right, so take your arms out long, tuck your chin, use that core strength, drop it all the way down to your back. And come over here, see. Now, you're gonna take your feet straight up to the sky. All right, flex your feet. Here's how we're gonna do it first. You're gonna bring your fingertips behind your neck so that your elbows are going out to the sides, both sides. Really flex your feet like the soles of your feet are coming up to the ceiling. You're just gonna lift your head and shoulders. We're gonna do 10 tiny little crunches. So we come up and down, that's one. Up and down, that's two. Keep your elbows going out to the sides, right? Don't let them peel it. Down, up and down, up and down. We're gonna do five more. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so now you come all the way down here. Now, this time you're gonna take your arms overhead, right? Extend them long. Now you're gonna come up, you're gonna lift your head and shoulders, reach your fingertips towards your feet. So you're lifting up and then you're coming down, letting those arms go overhead. We've done this before, right? Really simple. Just lift up, reach your fingertips towards your toes, come all the way back down. By all the way back down, I mean that your thumbs are gonna hit the mat, right? You're reaching back behind you. Let's do eight more of those. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, 
too. And one more. All right, now, come all the way down here. Now, what you're going to do here, you're going to peel up with your head and shoulders. Reach your fingertips toward your toes, right? As you get here, I just want you to pulse, right? So we're just pulsing, reaching up the whole time. Pulse, pulse, pulse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now let your head and shoulders come down. Let your arms relax. You can take them overhead. You can rest them at your sides for a moment. All right, we're going to do it. One more thing here with our legs straight up in the air. This time you're gonna take your hands, now you're gonna reach up towards your feet, right? Peeling your head and shoulders up. Right? We're gonna stay here, we're gonna move our arms, we're gonna stay here with the upper body, right? So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your right hand, reach it across your body like you're reaching towards the outside of your left foot. Take your left hand, it's just gonna reach straight forward, right? And then you're gonna bring both hands back up. Take your left hand, bring it like you're trying to reach it to the outside of your right foot. And that right hand's just reaching straight forward. And then come back up. So you're just going back and forth here. To the left, to the right. 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 Six more each way. Five more. Four more. Three more. Two more. Last one. And then let your head and shoulders come all the way down. Take your knees, hug them in to your chest. All right, now take your hands to the crease of your knees, rock it up here. Now, as we come up here, you're gonna be in this hook line. Try to take your feet a little bit away from you. Take your hands, bring them back behind you, right? So we're making this nice and loose right now. Later on, we're gonna tighten it up and make our core work. Now I want you to take your left foot, right? Lift it up and put your left ankle on top of your right knee. So you like this. Right? Now later on, we'll do this as more of a stretch, right? But here we're trying to challenge ourselves. So here's what I need you to do. Maybe it's easy, maybe it's hard. It's hard to get into, not that hard to hold once we're there, right? It's just, I shouldn't say hard to get into, it's awkward to get into, all right? But you're gonna start to bring your right foot towards you. Now, you're gonna take your right hand, see if you can grab a hold of that right foot. And then what you wanna do here is get that right leg up straight. Right, so I've got my right leg up straight. I still got my left knee on top of it. And then I'm gonna take my left hand up to the sky. Just like this. And once you get there, see if you can just hold, right? I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna turn to the side so you guys can see what it looks like from the side. Right foot up, grab onto it. Come all the way straight. And then left hand up to the sky. There we go. Right, so I'm holding on to the outside of my foot. You can hold on to the inside of your foot. You can have your piece <laughs> your big toe, right? If you have to, maybe you're grabbing around that left leg around, or now around that right leg, around that left foot. All right, take three more breaths. Now I gotta get back into it. <laughs> get there. That's good. <laughs> Two more breaths. And you're gonna come down, release that right foot, let it come back down, take your hands down, and then take that left foot off. All right. Well, let's do that the other way, the more challenging way for me. We'll see for you guys, right? <laughs> if it's easier or harder, but now you're gonna give yourself a lot of space in the beginning. So you can take that right knee, put it on top of a right ankle, put it on top of your left heel. And then from here, grab a hold of that left foot, kick it up, and then make it, kick it all the way straight. Okay. Do it on the side, I swear. All right, see, I'm not getting there. <laughs> my left foot up first. I'll take my right 
click, slide it on in, maybe, no. All right, so I'm coming up, right? I need to hold on to my left shin because I can't get there. I'm gonna take my left hand up to the sky. Right, I'm trying here. Maybe once I'm up, do it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna go from the other side, so I'm right here. Wherever you are, hold for three more breaths. And then release, let that left foot set back down. Bring that right foot back down, come all the way back down. Yesterday when I did it, I could do it on my left side, but that was in the night right? and my body was warm all day. This is the first real exercise I've tried to do today. I didn't get there on my left side. I don't even know if you guys did. <laughs> I did my easy side. What? I, I, I put lotion on my feet this morning, not a good idea. <laughs> I couldn't hold on. <laughs> it works, sometimes it doesn't, right? That's what we should. I definitely felt my core working as I'm trying to get into it on the left oh. side. And that's the whole point, right? All right, now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come onto our backs here again. We're gonna do our hundreds, right? Because those are fun. And we haven't done them in a little while. So, you're gonna take your legs out long, tuck your chin, come on down to your back. All right, bring your knees up so that your knees are over your hips, your calves are parallel to the ground. This is our floating oh. table. Now, you can stay right here in floating table the whole time we do the hundreds, right? What we do in the hundreds, we lift the head and shoulders, we reach the hands forward, right? So right now my palms are towards the ground and we count to 100. Now to the count of five, you can flip your palms up and down. If you like to do that, add a little work to the arms. You can do that if you want to, right? Or you can just hold them reaching straight ahead. You can keep your legs in floating table the whole time, or you can take your legs between floating table and straight up to the sky to the count of five. Right? If you really want to challenge yourself today, you start with your legs straight up to the sky, you drop them to a 45 degree angle and bring them back up to the count of five, right? But don't just hold your legs straight up. That's too easy, right? If you're going to hold them, hold them in that floating table so you get a little more core work having to hold that angle. Now, you can let your head come down to the ground when we're doing this, especially if you get tired in the middle, but you've got to keep your shoulders and your fingertips elevated, right? If you can lift your head, lift your head. But if you get to 75 and you're going to die, let your head come down while you keep your head until while you keep your shoulders and your fingertips elevated so your core keeps working. Now I'm gonna go to the middle level here. I'm gonna go between floating table and straight up, right? You guys can do what you want. You can hold the floating table or you can take it at that 45 degree angle. Ready? Here we go. We're gonna inhale. One, two, three, four, five, exhale, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, exhale, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. After the hundreds, right? We're gonna go into our roll ups. So we're gonna take our legs all the way long, take your arms all the way overhead. So you're just laying flat on the ground here. Now, we start with the harder version first. Right? You tuck your chin to your chest, you peel your upper body up, off the mat, and then you roll forward, making that C curve with your spine. Right? I'm gonna start to angle myself a little differently. Right? Over here, and then you come. And you can roll all the way back down. Now, my heels slid along the mat, right? That's why I hit the bolsters. But what they didn't do is come up off the mat. So that's important. Now, if you can't keep your legs from coming off the ground and you're trying to get up and it has to be like this for you to get up, right? I don't want you to do that. Then you're going to do the dead bug, right? In the dead bug, you take one leg up, 
Okay, both legs up. Reach the fingertips towards the toes, just like we were doing earlier in that exercise, right? And then you roll up in that shape. So whether you're doing the straight ups, you're gonna do the dead bugs. We're gonna do 10. So I'm gonna do eight more here. Eight. Seven. table, right? That was our starting point in the hundreds. We've got the knees over the hips and the calves parallel to the ground. Now, from here, we're going to go back like we did before. We had our feet straight up to the sky, right? You're going to take your fingertips behind your neck. Let your elbows go out long and just lift up and down in those tiny crunches. And we're going to do 10. 10, 9, 8, trying to keep your legs perfectly still right there, not going anywhere. Your knees stay over your hips, your calves stay parallel to the ground. Four more, four, three, two, and one. Right now, you're gonna take your arms overhead, right? Reach them out long overhead. Now you're gonna peel your head and shoulders up. You see, you can take your hands the top of your knees, right? So it's here, and you come all the way back down. Here, and down. Do it eight more times. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Coming down here. Now, here's where I want to recheck your legs, right? Make sure they're right in that perfect floating table. Flex your feet so your toes are coming back towards you. Now, here, take your arms up to the sky, right? So your palms are facing each other. I've done this before. You're going to bend into your elbows, right? So it's like your palms are framing your face. So your elbows are pointed towards your knees. They're not touching, right? Your palms are coming right by your face to the side of your head. Your legs are in that perfect L shape. You're gonna let your fingertips go down to the floor so your elbows point even more up to the sky. So you're touching your fingertips back behind your head. And you're gonna take at the same time your heels down to the mat without changing the L shape of your leg, right? So you're not kicking your legs straight to get down there and you're not dropping your heels to your glutes and trying to get your toes there, right? You're trying to drop your heels to the mat in that perfect L shape while your elbows are still in an L shape so your fingertips came to the floor. Right? So this is our down position. Now, when we come back up this time, right, you're going to let your elbows and your knees come together. So your tailbone might lift, right? You get a little lift of your head and shoulders. So it's a little crunch. But as you come back down, same thing, right? We're keeping the L shape in the legs, keeping the L shape in your legs, in, the, in your arms, right? Tapping down, pulling it all in. Tapping down, pulling it all in. Let's do eight more here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Right now. Bring it all back to where it was, and then just take your hands and go around your knees, hook your knees in to your chest. Try 
kind of roll those knees to one side or the other. And bring it back up. Seated. And then as we come here, now, you can come into boat again, right? We were here before, or you can have your toes on the ground, right? But you want to keep your leg, your arms free, right? You're going to take your elbows, bend into them, so you're here, right? It's like you're holding a block or something, if you had a block. Right? You can be like right here. You don't have to have a block. I want you to hold, right? And then it's like you're driving the car. You're going to turn and turn, right? So you're just waving back and forth. Now let those knees get involved. Let your knees drop over, right? When your arms are reaching to the right, let your knees drop to the left. Bring it all back to center, right? So now you've got the whole thing's going. It's like a windshield wiper in your car now instead of driving your car, right? Which maybe was the wrong analogy the first time. Okay, we're going to do eight more each way. Eight, eight, seven, Seven, six, six, five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Now drop your feet down to the mat. Push your belly to your thighs. Hug around your knees. Tip your chin to your chest. Come back up. Now we're gonna go back down to our back one more time. So take your arms out long, up your chin to your chest, round it all the way down to your back. All right, now I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do our bicycles. We're gonna do the straight-legged version of bicycles, which I'm pretty sure I've done with you guys before. If it feels like too much and you wanna go and just do a regular bicycle, you can, right? In the straight-legged bicycles, we're gonna take our feet Straight up to the sky. You're gonna bring your fingertips behind your neck, just like we did before. Elbows out to the sides. You're gonna drop your left heel down to the mat. So your left heel hovers the mat, right? And then you're gonna keep that left elbow, I mean left elbow, right elbow, glued to the mat. That's not gonna leave the mat. You're gonna pick your left shoulder up, bring your left shoulder towards your right knee, right? Not your left elbow, that will, that will go towards your left knee too. I mean, your right knee, right? But it's not leading, you're not flapping around that elbow. You're trying to get your shoulder up off the mat, push it towards your right knee, come back down. Pull your left leg up, drop your right heel till it hovers the ground. Take the left elbow anchored to the ground, peel your right shoulder up, reach it towards your left knee. Come back down, switch out your legs. Right? So that's the straight legged bicycle. We'll try a couple, see how it feels. If you need to, you can switch it where you come to floating table and you just come with your knees bent each time, right? A little easier. So you decide where you want to be with it. I'm gonna do eight more on each side here. Eight. Eight. Seven. Six, and just slow it way down so it's getting a little out of control. So we're going slower. Five. Five. Four. Four. Three more. Three. Three. Here. One. One. All right, now, let your head and shoulders come down. Hug those knees into your chest. Hopefully, you felt that in the obliques. Now, you're going to drop your hands to the mat here. All right? And you're going to take, you're going to keep your feet on the ground. Take your arms overhead. We're going to try to peel ourselves all the way up here, right, in these steps. So you're gonna use your arms. So you're gonna let your arms reach forward to push you all the way up, right? And then you come all the way back down. So you're gonna find that you need your arms, right, to come. It's that pushing them forward that gets you up and down, 
All right. So do that eight times, eight more times. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. All right, now lay it all the way down. Now here, right? I want you to just take your arms overhead, like we were just doing, right? But as you lift up, think about your biceps staying glued to your ears. So you're not gonna throw your arms forward, right? Your arms are gonna stay even with your head and lift up, right? And see how much harder it is to get all the way up. So don't go all the way up here. Keep your feet on the ground. Just lift your head and shoulders as much as you can. Get the head and shoulders off the ground. Not much more is going to come up unless you're super strong and you get it all up and do that. Right? And then come back down. So I want you to feel the difference here, right? You're working the core in both ways, right? But how much your arms help you when it comes to getting that momentum to get up and down. You'll notice here, right? So up and down without letting your biceps come away from your ears. Seven more here. Seven. Six. Your chin pointed up to the sky. Five, don't tuck it to your chest. Four, three, two, one. All right now, take your knees, bring them into your chest. All right, let's do a couple rock and rolls here. That means we're gonna, we're gonna bring ourselves up to seated, but as you rock up, okay, try to keep your heels covering the mat. See how my heels aren't on the mat? Right? And then when I come back down, I'm going to tuck my chin as I round down my head and shoulders. Don't hit the mat. You come back up with your heels stay off the mat. Right, so do that a few times. As always, if it seems super easy, do it without holding on to your knees. And just let your arms stay reaching forward. Right? Don't swing them around and use momentum. Just let them be forward. If you need them behind your knees, you can also pull up and down and keep them behind your knees. Let's do five more here. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. All right, now we're going to bring it all the way up. Keep your legs around in front of you. Right, I'm gonna come sideways. I feel like you guys can see me better when I do that. All right, so we're gonna have our legs all the way in front of us. And then all we're gonna do here, right, you're gonna come into your staff pose. That means you're gonna take your hands back behind you so that they're right here by your hips, right? So they're not, I shouldn't say behind you, right? They're not here where your arms, your fingers are back behind your shoulders. Bring them right underneath your shoulders, bring your hands right underneath your shoulders, bring your Shoulders even with your hips, right? Flex your feet, get your toes are coming back towards you. That should feel like a lot of work just sitting right here. Right? Now, push into your palms and just lift up. Right? I didn't lift my hips up off the mat. I'm gonna push into the mat so that it feels like my hips became light. I'm using my core to sit up even taller. And back down, right? Do that about five more times. Just pushing in, coming back down. Four, three, two, and one. Now, with your hands right by your sides, you can lift that right foot up off the mat, then back down. Now lift your left foot up off the mat, then back down. So I don't know how that felt for you, right? I feel it in my quads, and then you feel it in your hip flexors. You want to feel it in the core, right? Now try it. Take your hands back behind you. Lean back into your hands and see how much easier it is, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want you to do that. We're going to come all the way forward. You're going to keep your hands by your hips. Like there's a string on top of your head, pulling you to the ceiling. Lift your right leg, lift your left leg. Keep your feet flexed. It helps a little bit, right? Come back towards your face. back a little bit, so I'm sitting back up. 
can tell it's because it's getting easier because I'm starting to slouch and lean back. Let's do it four more times each time. Four. Four. Three. Three. Two. Two. One more time. One. One. All right now, from here. Right now I'm going to face you guys. Right? You're going to keep your right leg long. Bend into your left knee. Now you want that left foot right inside your right thigh, right? Now you're going to take your left hand back behind you, right side on the ground. You take your right hand, just hug around your left knee. So you're twisting to the left right now. Feels good. Don't worry, we're going to stretch out in a second, but we have a little more core work to add on here. And what you're going to do, you're going to slide that right hand down, grab onto the outside of your left foot, right? And then pick that left foot up, kick it all the way straight. And take your right hand, your left hand, reach it back behind you. See, I'm doing this now, I feel like maybe I should do it this way, all right? So we're here, lifting it up, and then you're kicking that left foot up, reaching your left hand back behind you. Maybe you can let that right heel come off the ground. As you release your core, maybe you have to let that right heel stay down. Hold it here for three breaths. You're going to take your left hand, sweep it forward now. So you're going to grab onto the outside of your left foot with your left hand, move your right hand to the inside of your left leg. You can lift that right foot up, maybe let it come down here, maybe you can keep it up. You're taking that left leg all the way straight, flexing your left foot so your, so your heel goes up towards the ceiling. So now you should be feeling a stretch in your left hand ring, right? So it's a little bit of core work. Yeah, maybe lift that right heel, right? But I don't want you to bend deeply into that left knee, keep that right heel up, right? The right heel has to stay down. Six down because I want you to get that hamstring stretch at the same time. Three breaths here. Now, everybody's going to bend into their right knee, plant that right foot on the ground, bend into your left knee, and then put your left ankle right on top of your right knee. All right, so we did this before. We're not doing that crazy core thing here, right? I want this to be a hip stretch for you. So take your hands back behind you, right? And you can take as much space as you need here, right? You might have to lean further back. You might work that right foot further away. But I want you to feel it in that left hip, right? So to feel it more, right, what you do is tighten it up. You bring your hands closer, you push your chest towards the left thigh, you bring that right foot in closer. I like to push into my hands and lift my hips. I can slide my hips all the way towards my right heel. And then I really feel it. You don't have to do that. I just want you to take it somewhere where you're feeling some sensation in that left hip, wherever that is for you. You need it to be with plenty of space. If you need plenty of space, you can get into the pose, then that's what you're going to do. Three more breaths here. Slowly going to start to come out of it. Right. Give yourself as much space as you need. You can take that left foot and set it back down. All right, now we're going to do all of that on the right side. Right. So, you're going to take your left leg long this time, bend into your right knee. Your right foot's on the inside of your left thigh. And we start with a nice, gentle twist. Right. Take your right hand back behind you. Let your left hand hug around your right knee and over your right shoulder. And then you're going to slide the left hand down. Grab the inside of your right foot with your left hand and then kick that right foot up to the sky. And then once you're there, you take that right hand, reach your back behind you. Find your balance, lift your left heel off the mat. Hold here, five breaths. And then you're going to take that right hand, bring it around, grab the outside of your right foot. Okay, so now you've got both feet. Again, you can let that left heel come down to the ground, or you can keep it hovering, right? But you're kind of trying to kick that right leg, all of that 
right leg all the way straight. So you feel that stretch in your right hamstring. It helps you get it more straight and get more stretch out of it. Put that left heel down and drop your left heel. Give you that last little bit of core strength and keep that left heel up. We'll rest here. Now you're going to bend into your left knee. Put it flat on the ground, bend into your right knee. Bring your right ankle on top of your left knee. Take your hands, bring them back behind you. Give yourself plenty of space at the beginning to get into the pose to see how it feels, right? Then you can tighten it up or loosen it up depending on what you need, right? The more you push forward and push your chest forward your right thigh, the more you're gonna feel the closer your hands are to your hips, the more you're gonna feel the closer your hips are to your left heel, the more you're gonna feel. Find your spot here. Take a more breaths right here. Let yourself take a little bit more space so that you can easily set that right foot down and then come back down. All right, let's take one more stretch here. We've got the time. Take your legs out super wide, this wide legged seated position, right? You can kind of rock back and forth a little bit. Feel those sit bones, those bony bones in the back of your glutes press into the mat, right? And then again, like before, you have that string on top of your head, pulling you straight up towards the ceiling. Take your hands, bring them in front of you. And then you start to walk forward here with a nice flat back. Maybe you drop down to your elbows. Maybe stand on your palms. Right? Don't try to tuck your chin to your chest. You're not trying to drive your head to the ground. You're trying to bring your chest as far forward as it will go. One more rest here. It back up nice and slow now as you walk it back up here take your legs back together and then bend into your knees put your feet on the ground we're going to lie back back down on our back do our last pose our leg with the wall pose right and you can do the legs with the wall pose without a wall take your feet straight up to the sky lay in the center of your mat flex your feet like you're going to step on the ceiling head hip shoulders all stay down that great inversion benefit. If you have wall space and you want to use it, you can bring your hips up against the wall so you've got to side your hip to the wall. So then you can scoot around, swing your legs up the wall. Right now, my legs are up the wall right now. My hips are way away from the wall. The only thing touching the wall is my heels. Right? So to make it a true legs at the wall, I gotta scoot it in closer, which can sometimes be the hardest part, right? You want your legs to touch the wall so that all of your leg touches the wall. And you just get that little extra support. So if you like that, come there, right? If you've got the wall space for it, come there. If you don't, then you're just gonna be in the center of your mat with your legs up to the sky. I'm gonna take a few more breaths wherever you are. Letting the blood go from your feet. Pools all day, back to your head and your heart. When you're ready to come out of this wherever you are so you're just going to bend your knees right now if you're on the wall your feet come to the wall and when your feet are against the wall you roll into that fetal position if you were just in the middle of your mat you bend your knees let your knees scrape along your face and body let your feet drop all the way back down to the ground either way whether you've got your feet on the wall or your feet on the ground then you're going to roll over to one side or the other a nice little fetal position and then push all the way up 
All right. Come in closer now. All right. So that was our Pilates for today.